Hello friends, this is Manoj Goel, co-founder of the Wall Street School. Friends, in this video, we will understand how to prepare a financial feasibility model in Excel. For this exercise, we will use real numbers and a real project. Friends, we will also understand how financial feasibility modeling is different from DCF analysis. So, before we get into preparation of financial feasibility model, let's first understand what feasibility study is or modeling is and who prepared this. Friends, financial feasibility modeling is prepared to understand financial viability of a project. So suppose you have a project to start and you want to understand whether this project will give me required rate of return or not before committing any investment into it. So we do financial feasibility study. Under this study, we will project detailed cash inflows and outflows. And on the basis of this, we try to understand what sort of return this project will give us on the basis of these estimated earnings. Friends, this modeling is done at the initial stage of the investment. Okay, so on the basis of the study, we decide whether this project is viable or not. How this modeling is different from DCF? As in both the cases, we do detailed analysis of future cash flows, inflows and outflows. And on that basis, we take decision. So it's important to understand basic difference between two. Difference number one, purpose. See, the purpose of financial feasibility modeling is we prepare these model to evaluate the viability and profitability of the project. We try to understand whether a particular project or business is profitable or not. Okay. They help stakeholders such as investors or management to assess whether the project is worth pursuing or not. So here we have an option to undertake or not to undertake particular project. The project has not been started yet. Whereas in case of DC evaluation, we estimate intrinsic value of existing business. The business is into place and we try to find its fair valuation on the basis of its future cash flows. The aim of DC evaluation is to find out present value of future expected cash flows. Okay. And we try to understand whether a particular company or project is undervalued or overvalued in the market compared to its fair value. So in case of financial feasibility study, we have not started any project yet. We are doing this analysis before starting of the project. Whereas in case of DC evaluation, project is already in place and we are trying to find what the fair valuation of this particular project or company based on its future cash flows. Difference number two, stage of analysis. Friends, financial feasibility study is done in the initial stage before we make any investment into project. Whereas DCF modeling is done when the operations are, the company is already into operations. Okay. So DC evaluation is done at a later stage when there is some business in operations. Okay. Now friends, let's understand step-by-step -step approach to prepare a financial feasibility model for a particular project. Step one, understanding project requirements. In this step, we will understand what are the requirements of the project, what this project is all about, how we will earn cash flows from this project. What sort of investment is required in this project? Then, under step two, we need to estimate capital expenditures and operating cost we need to incur on this project. Then, in step three, we need to estimate revenues from this project, how we will earn cash flows, how we will monetize this project. Then, in step four, we will compute net cash flows from the project. So net cash flows basically 
cash inflows and minus cash outflows. So basically step 3 minus step 2. In the next step, step 5, we will create a debt schedule. This debt schedule will be cre created only if project is financed through debt. If you are using 100% equity, no debt schedule is required. Okay. So under debt schedule, we will estimate total amount of debt we are raising, repaying and interest cost on it. Okay. Step 6. Under step 6, we will calculate net cash flows, net cash flows to equity investors. So basically total cash flows to the project, net cash flows to the project minus interest expense plus debt raised minus debt repaid. Step 4, we are getting total cash flows from the project. From this, we need to make adjustment for the debt and we will be left with cash inflows and outflows to the equity holders. In the final step, step number seven, we need to calculate key output from this model. So basically, we need to calculate IRR to the equity or to the entire project, basically for net present value of the project or sensitivity analysis of the project. And there may be many more output. Okay. So in this step, step number seven, <clears throat> we will understand what return this, will, this project will give. To the investors okay and we calculate this return from the different different investors point of view we can calculate this from the perspective of firm which includes debt and equity both or we can calculate this from the perspective of equity investors okay friends now we will apply the seven step process the process of preparing financial feasibility model on a real estate model okay so first, let's understand the key assumptions of this project and then we'll do this exercise in Excel. So real estate project summary. Friends, we have assumed that we have a property, okay, that requires some refurbishment, okay. There's some old property there and we need to do some refurbishment there, okay. After which we are planning to convert this into multiple apartments okay once the refurbishment is complete these apartments will be put up for sale so this property will be converted into small small apartments and then we'll sell them details of capital expenditures capex and operating expenses so what sort of expenses we have to incur to develop this project okay day one we have to make some initial investment to purchase this property okay to purchase this property we need to make some initial investment of usd 50 million dollar okay then on the day one itself we have to incur some transaction and the legal cost of 1 million dollar okay so this is investment at the zero stage zero time initial stage then we have to do some operational capex operational capex means the capex which will be incurred during the tenure of the project okay gradually gradually so we have to incur operational capex of 15 million dollar over the period of 24 months so basically to do this refurbishment to convert this property into apartments we have to incur an investment of $15 million, a capex of $15 million. And this capex we will incur over the period of 24 months. Okay. It will not be done in one go. Then there would be some operating expenses. Okay. Say marketing expenses, admin team expenses and all. So these operating expenses would be $1 million per annum yearly expenses. Okay. So these are expense, capex and operating expenses related assumptions of this project. Then project monetization. Okay. How we will monetize this project? How we will earn cash flows from this project? Because in this step, first step, we have estimated cash outflows 
from this project. Now, in this step, we will calculate cash inflows. So, how we will get cash flows from this project? The total developmental a development area is 20,000 square meter. So, the total area we are developing under this project is 20,000 square meter. This is the sellable area. Okay. See, the sales price per square meter is $6,000. So, per square meter selling price is $6,000. Okay. Sale takes place over the period of 24 months post capex spent after completion of capex okay capital expenditure because you can see we are we are incurring operational capital expenditure over the period of 24 months so it will take 24 months to convert this property into apartments once this phase is over we'll start selling this project so the assumption is sales will start after completion of this construction okay project so capital gain tax of 10 percent on profits to be paid when the last sales is made so we have to pay taxes on the gain we are earning on this project and this tax rate is 10 percent okay we have to pay capital gain tax of 10 percent on the total profit earned and this tax will be paid when we are making the last sale. Okay, guys. So this is assumption about project monetization. Now, friends, project financing. How we will do the financing of the project? From which sources we will raise capital to fund this project? Okay. So leverage. Leverage means debt. How much we are, with, you know, what part of the project will be funded through debt? So we are using debt to fund this project. Operational capex to be 50% funded with the debt. We are using 50% debt to fund my operational capex requirement. Okay. So suppose if my operational capex is $100 million, I am raising $50 million of debt to fund this requirement. Okay. Whereas in this case, it is $15 million. So we'll be raising 50% of it as a debt gradually, right? Assume that cost of funding is 7%. So cost of debt is 7% and debt to be repaid using proceeds from the sale. So once the sales will start, okay, when we'll start monetizing this project, we'll use sales proceeds to pay off my debt, okay? First, I'll pay off debt and then balance will go to the equity. Okay. Second source of financing, JV partner will contribute $20 million of the day one investment and 25% of the capex equity. So friends, what they are saying that there is a JV partner. So developer is having another joint venture partner. JV means joint venture. So developer is having a joint venture partner there who will contribute a $20 million of the day one investment. So what was my day one investment? If you remember, my day one investment was $50 million. Of this $50 million, JV partner will contribute $20 million. It means $30 million will come from developer. Okay. And, and. JV partner will also contribute 25%, 25% of capex equity. Capex means operational capex. Okay, $15 million. Of this, 25% will be contributed by JV partner. We need to prepare a financial model. Okay, this is the requirement of the project. You need to prepare a financial model on monthly basis and calculate the following from the model. So you first need to prepare a financial model in which you will calculate cash inflows, outflows, you know, net cash flows and all. And on that basis, what you need to calculate? You need to calculate deal cash flows. So basically cash inflows minus cash outflows. This is your first requirement in this. Two, deal IRR. You need to calculate internal rate of return from this project. Okay, 
So basically what equity holders, investors are earning from this investment, what return they are earning from this project. Step three, money multiple on the deal. Money multiple is basically cash inflows divided by cash outflows. So what time you are earning, basically if you are earning 200 rupees of cash inflows on the investment of 100, so your money multiple would be two times. You are earning two times of cash on the investment of 100 rupees, okay? Profit on the deal. So what total profit you will be making on this investment, okay? Basically uh, your cash inflows minus all the expenses. Sensitivity of the deal IRR. So you need to run sensitivity analysis on the deal IRR. Deal IRR, what we calculated in two, uh, requirement number two, based on price per square meter and capex spent. So we have to do sensitivity analysis on the basis of price per square meter. Basically, if the price changes and capital expenditure changes, instead of $15 million, suppose there is an overrun in the cost. Project cost, actually it is $17 million, okay? Or if the price changes, price square foot is not 6,000, If what if it is 5,000 or 7,000, then how my IRR will change? This we will do on the final output with the help of sensitivity analysis, okay? Then the sixth requirement of this uh, model is NAV of the deal in each month. We have to calculate net asset value, right? Of, of the project on a monthly basis. Every month we need to calculate NAV, okay? Basically NAV is what? Present value of cash inflows and outflows, okay? This you have to calculate on the monthly basis. Requirement number seven, you need to calculate JV partners share of profit such that developers IRR is 20% per annum at the end of the day. So you need to calculate what should be joint venture partners share in the total profit so that Developer's IRR is 20%. So friends, now we will prepare a financial feasibility model for this case study. So we'll first put these assumptions in the Excel template and on that, this basis, on the basis of these assumptions, we will do projection of CAPEX and the cash flows and then we'll calculate required output. So let's go to the next video where we'll create a financial model on the basis of these assumptions.